one for the better team. I can't say it any other way. I don't really think everybody knows what they're about to witness. I have no talent when I see one. I should be an NFL scout. Jonathan, I don't like that pick. I love that pick. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Dormade Podcast, and welcome to our Divisional Series episode. This is where we go through every single division, and we rank who's going to come in first and who's going to come in last. Now, we've separated each division by each episode. So this episode is the NFC North. Now, if you don't remember or you just didn't know, the Detroit Lions are in, are, uh, in this division, the, the Green Bay Packers in this division, the Minnesota Vikings, and the Chicago Bears. Now, for reference, last year, the Lions won the division for the first time in ages. The Packers came in second, and they both made the playoffs. And then the Vikings came in third, and the Bears came in last. They both missed the playoffs. So now we go into this year. Who do we think is going to be first? In my opinion, first in the AFC North is going to be NFC. the Detroit Lions. NFC. What did I say? AFC? <laughs> AFC. You say AFC. And NFC oh, North. Even. Okay, okay. So in my opinion, I think in the NFC North, number one, is the Detroit Lions are going to go back to back. I have the Detroit Lions also winning the NFC North going back to back division champs. For the NFC North, I am picking the Packers. Number one. For the NFC North, the Chicago Bears will be (laughs) the number one seed. (laughs) Okay. I respect it. Oh, I respect no. the this team is going to take the NFL by storm this season. It's going to surprise everyone. I'm telling you now, the Chicago Bears are going to get the number 1 seed in the NFC North. It's going to happen. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. All right. Let's go, let's go to last place. Dead last mm-hmm. in the NFC North, I have Minnesota Vikings. Wow. Last place in the NFC North, I have the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, it's a surprise because I actually have the Vikings as well. <laughs> you guys are serious? Because I actually yeah. have the Minnesota Vikings. No. Okay. Oh. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right let's okay. hop on this uh, this train here. So, Caleb, you said the Packers first. Jonathan, yeah. you said the Bears first. John and I have the Lions. Um, let's just start off with a, a common denominator. Where, how are the Lions going to fall off? Yeah, I mean, seriously. They're not going to fall off. They're going to do great. They're going to have a great season. I think they're still going to make the playoffs, um, you know, be a wild card. But it's not much them. It's more so the Bears, if that makes sense. Okay. Caleb Williams. Explain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Caleb Williams. So- Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams. I've seen <laughs> enough of this guy. He's going to be great. <laughs> I've seen enough. He's gonna be great. I, I, like wa- I've watched him the, uh, the preseason these past few games. The things this guy does, unbelievable. The only comp to Mahomes is this guy. The only comparable wow. guy is Caleb Williams to, to, to Mahomes. You can just tell this guy's gonna be a star. He makes plays where where there seems to be no way. This guy makes plays. He's a winner. He's a winner. And I think the Bears and Lions, when they, anytime they go against each other, it's gonna be a really interesting game. But Caleb Williams, he's no, there's nobody's gonna, he's not gonna be stoppable. He's, okay, he's not gonna be stoppable. Um, it's gonna be fun to watch because we're witnessing Mahomes too. We're witnessing Mahomes wow. too, and I think everyone is gonna realize that probably midway in the season that this guy is a real deal. Okay, so not so much the Lions, but the Chicago Bears. Not only that, okay, he has pretty good weapons. Um, his yeah. favorite target based on preseason and training camp. Uh, Rome, right? I don't know how to pronounce his name. Romeo, yeah, Rome. yeah, Rome Odunze. 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 Okay. But he also has Keenan Allen. Yeah, more. Which, I mean, Keenan Allen has, yeah. apparently he's gained 20 pounds since last season. He went from like 210 to 230. Um, so, it's all muscle. Yeah, that's, that's something to keep yeah, in mind. He's jacked. Yeah, so that's... He's bulking. He's bulking. They got DeAndre Swift. Yeah, DeAndre Swift. Exactly. What about DJ Moore? Yeah, DeAndre Swift. So... Gerald Everett. Gerald Did Everett, yep. Um, Kevin Baird. They, have com- they do have a lot of weapons. Yeah, they have a lot of I respect weapons. the Bears. But... Uh, yeah, Caleb Williams is not yeah. losing um, this division. So, I, 
I've never, well, first I, I got to give for the viewers and, and among us too, like I got to give Jonathan the credit because as much as you make a different opinion than us, like last year you had the most, I call them maverick points where you were the only one to pick the number one that was right. Mm-hmm. You know, the, so you have the most out of all of us where you went against the tide and, you know, uh, and I think in two circumstances where you're right. And I think I had one. So I give you credit for seeing it from my perspective. I don't know much about Caleb Williams other than headlines. From my perspective, because you guys know I like to hear the college, you know, from you guys, I see a little bit, you know, I know we're on a football podcast, but I watch it. I've never seen so much hype around a guy that's supposed to be good that people are saying will be good in in, in years. Like, I think the last the last example I can think of, I'm sure there's been other ones, but like Peyton Manning went number one overall, like one over one of one, you know, and he, he, capped, he came out to be what we know of now as Peyton Manning. And like the last example I think of is like, Again, you guys can think of better ones, but like Carson Wentz and Jared Goff both made it to Super Bowls. But where are their teams now? Like, it seems like my perspective from the media is like Caleb Williams is actually supposed to be Peyton Manning esque. Because like even more so, when Mahomes got drafted, it was like a year or two where it was like developing. And it, was, mm-hmm. it seems like with Caleb Williams, they're just throwing him in right away. So it's like, if he is legit, because people I think are going to hate on him for like whenever there's a lot of hype around an athlete you know, see it with like Caitlin Clark or something like people just hate on, you know, it's just not it's human energy a little bit. And I've never seen it like this with a quarterback where he's supposed to be like, make like the expectation is make the playoffs. And I mean, but it's the bears too. And the bears have not had a good quarterback in many a year. So it's like, and their I don't, defense, I their you. defense still isn't great. Um, yeah. But Caleb, I'm curious from your standpoint, cause you're, you're mm-hmm. talking a lot about the bears. You think the Packers are going to get first. So Give me like a point or two why the Packers will get first, and then how far back are the Lions and Bears? I think it'd be close. The biggest factor for me is is almost the psychological, not the psychological part, but I think the Lions are the expected winner. So when there's that big of a target on your back, I think that will make some of the games come down to the wire and might give a game or two edge to the Packers, who have Love, who is developing, who did surprise a lot of the league last year. I mean, he did – well, like it, the statement last year was like, did the did, did the Packers really get another all time, you know, franchise? I mean, not all time, but they get did they get another franchise quarterback three in a row? That was the question. And then he leaves the league, um, you know, they lose in the playoffs. But the the last impression, the, the big impression was like they beat the Cowboys, who were supposed to go all the way. And so now this year, it's like I don't think teams are expecting them to be better than the Lions, and that expectation might give them the room to maybe get some close wins, make it continue to make a name for himself to be that guy the fall of the Vikings, you know, but outside of the Vikings, that three teams are supposed to be very good. So I think make, you know, being the best might be a game or two, because I still think the Lions will be really good. They have that energy, but I think NFC North might be one of the most competitive divisions if everything stands the way we see it now, because Packers, I don't think no one thought with the weapons they did have would have beat the Cowboys who had a better defense. And like, is the Cowboys defense better than the Bears or the Lions right now? And it's like, I, I think they are still better and they beat them. So it's like, if you carry with that, with the intention of like the Lions are going to get all the heat, maybe they do have a tougher schedule. What's in Jonathan's benefit. And I get, you know, to make your case for you, the bears have one of the easiest before the season starts. Uh, one of the easiest schedules, so to speak. Now, now we'll mm-hmm. see what reality is, but by ranking, they're one of the easier schedules. Packers are one of the tougher ones, but I think that kind of will, uh, I, I, I think they're that good of a team to be up there. So that's why I'm bullish on the, on the Packers more than the Lions, where the Lions have a pressure to do it. And it's part of that history where why I didn't pick the Bears is like the Bears and Lions for many years had to get that off their shoulders of like, oh, it's always the Bears. It's always the Lions. Like they always lose. The Lions, I think, got rid of it. The Packers have that history. I I think some of that pressure with how competitive the league is in that division, I think the Packers just squeak one out by a game or two. Yeah, the Packers have the least amount of pressure on them. I feel like in as far as the preseason goes and the off season, everybody's talking about Lions and Bears. And mm-hmm. nobody really is talking about the Packers. And in reality, the Packers went <laughs> to uh the what is it, the, the divisional round? Yeah. Yeah. They yep. won the wild yeah. card, went to the divisional round. They you were in the fi- they were in the final four teams for the NFC. Yeah. Uh and there's no hype in the off season except for oh, Love got his payday but yeah don't really hear much about the receiving core don't hear much about the defense it's just flying under the radar and you're i think you're right caleb i think teams don't really see packers as a threat 
and they are looking at the Bears are going to be tough, the Lions are going to be tough, and maybe they maybe they don't play them as hard. They don't play the Packers as hard. Um, but yeah. It's, it's a good yeah. point. I love the Bears, though. The Bears will improve a, yep. a lot. Um, and I I would – I wouldn't be surprised if they made a wild card. I would be very shocked if they won the division just because of how farther along the Lions are in the process of building this franchise. And they have the same coaches. They have the offense. They have the defense. They didn't lose too many players um, from the Lions. Uh, Only on on offense, they only really lost Josh Reynolds. Um, So that's fine. And then they lost a couple cornerbacks, but they gained them uh, in – uh, they drafted two cornerbacks in the first round, or drafted a cornerback in the first round. So, I don't, I just don't, I can't really comprehend the fall off of the Lions, um, but I could see the Packers maybe since they don't have that much of a hype that teams aren't going to play them as hard. It won't be that big of a game uh, to people. But yeah, guys, the Lions are a complete team. They're a complete team, and they're for guess- real. There's really no weakness for them. Yeah. yeah, I, I fundamentally I agree with like I think the lines will still be very good. But just to throw a question out to you guys, amongst what we know before the season starts, we're recording this before a game is played in the regular season. Amongst Love, Williams, or Goff, who is the best quarterbacks? You know, because Goff is the most right now, accomplished. Right now, I I do think Love is the best. Right, at now. least from what we've seen. Yeah, it's tough. To, I always have best. trouble saying a rookie quarterback. You think Williams? It's tough for me to say. I don't know. It'll take him, Williams. Right? The... It'll take Williams one game. It'll did take y'all watch one game? Did y'all watch? The yeah, three? that's because I said the same. I said I was fair to Love last year. I was like, I got to see a little more of Love. Before no, I make it's going to take Williams more than one. Did y'all see it's the preseason? Take him a month or two. He only played like a quarter. He's going to be immediate. Y'all, yeah, yeah. Did y'all see the preseason? He'll start immediately, but will I see it right away? Yeah, he looks. He looks. He looks so. He looks so calm. Uh, he looks so patient. Calm. He's making crazy plays. He looks like he's been in the league for like five years. Yeah, he's the best. He's the best in the league. I'm telling you guys now. Yeah, there's no he's question. The best in the well, I think it'd be fun. I'd like to he's see the great best, in the, best league. in the league already. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just more concerned about the coaching. Eberflus, I'm not high on, and then obviously the defense. They really gave up a lot of players on defense last year that they could have kept, and they decided to throw them all away, and. Now they don't really have anybody, so if the defense is going to be awful. Yeah, it's almost like he's at tough. it's almost like he's at USC again, again exactly. where, yeah, which he didn't do well. Like I mean, obviously <laughs> stats wise, he did, but as far as yeah. wins and stuff, they they didn't make the playoffs. They weren't they were maybe a top twenty five team, but if you they they were getting blown out by better teams. If you've seen him play during training camp a little bit during the preseason, it doesn't matter the plays they call. He's like Mahomes. He's going to scramble and find the open guy. That's what he does. That's what makes him great. Okay? Like, a lot of people don't have the agility to do that. A lot of people don't have the accuracy to do that. He has it all. And that's why he's going to be great. So, I can't wait. And they do have an easier schedule in the next few weeks. But uh, I'm telling you. Yeah. At least taking off of a – yeah. It's – the one thing that you can say is they finally built a offense around a quarterback for that quarterback to (laughs) succeed. This is like – Okay, if Caleb Williams doesn't succeed, it's finally not on the Bears, and that can't be a cop out and say, "Well, they just didn't give him the weapons." This guy has more weapons than freaking Mahomes has ever had. <laughs> like, like this is insane. And it was unfair. What he has. Fields. Fields. Yeah. So one last somebody's. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, go, go ahead. Uh, one I was last just gonna thing say I'll there say... was a one. There was one play that someone made or Williams, K. Williams made the other day. And he like oh, scrambled yeah. around the pocket and he ran out and, and ran in for a touchdown. And someone was like, dang, I haven't seen a Chicago Bears quarterback do that <laughs> since Justin Fields. <laughs> it <laughs> looked so similar. Down, like, next to... Yeah, <laughs> I think but that's what makes the pressure on Williams because it's, I mean, I said last year I liked Fields more. But, and then, but you know, it's not yeah, to the cut Bears, you on, the but, Bears yeah. fans feel like they've had hope before, and so they're being <laughs> a little cautious. I bet everybody I that's like not fields. Bears fans is more hyped than actual Bears yeah. fans. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, Bears fans, they have experienced sure, trauma. This is the year. This is the year. I think I think it's gonna take one a year. I think maybe next year they'll be better. But anyway, one last thing I'll say about the Lions, and one reason I think they'll be really good. Um, remember when Breeze was the quarterback of the Saints and 
typically you don't see two running backs from one team be fantasy relevant and be really good. But remember in Kamara's rookie year, Mark Ingram had like a bunch of touchdowns. He would always punch them in inside the five yard yeah. line. This this duo for the Lions is going to run this offense. You still have Amon Ross St. Brown. You still have Laporta. But from a fantasy perspective and in-game, that defense, all they need to do is get the ball back to the offense. And how are you going to stop Montgomery and Gibbs? It's going to be a two-headed backfield. That's going to be thunder and lightning, as Jonathan would say. Um, yeah. So it's going to be a really good backfield. I'm excited in fantasy and you know, it's going to be tough to get them off the field with those two running backs. Yeah, their offense, don't get me wrong, the offense is still going to be great. It's the defense that's in trouble. Roll. Like, yeah. how, like they should have went to the yeah. Super Bowl. Okay, they let the 49ers come back. That defense is, is the issue. And so we'll see how they improve over the next season, but that's what's going to be their Achilles heel. The offense is going to score points. I'm on, I'm on Ross and really Dan dependable. Campbell's big head. Well, that's the thing. Going Maybe forward he, fourth down. I, yeah, think, yeah. I think last year in the uh, super or in the um, NFC championship game. I think what happened, I think then this year he'll be a little bit more smart. 